This is Plant-Based Briefing, How Not to Die from Kidney Disease and How Not to Die from Diabetes by Dr. Michael Greger at NutritionFacts.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and this is the 10-minute curated content plant-based podcast where I narrate articles from experts with author permission on a variety of plant-based and vegan topics. Today I'm reading two shorter posts, so still keeping it to about 10 minutes or less, They're both by Dr. Michael Greger of NutritionFacts.org. Dr. Greger is a physician, a New York Times bestselling author, and internationally recognized speaker on nutrition, food safety, and public health issues. He's a founding member and fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, and he's licensed as a general practitioner specializing in clinical nutrition. He's a graduate of the Cornell University School of Agriculture and Tufts University School of Medicine. He founded NutritionFacts.org, which is a non-commercial, science-based public service, providing free updates on the latest in nutrition research via bite-sized videos. There are more than a thousand videos on nearly every aspect of healthy eating, with new videos and articles uploaded every day. I highly recommend you check out NutritionFacts.org. And one other amazing thing about Dr. Greger is that 100% of all proceeds he has ever received from his books, DVDs, and speaking engagements have always and will always be donated to charity. Now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. How Not to Die from Kidney Disease and How Not to Die from Diabetes, both by Dr. Michael Greger at NutritionFacts.org. How Not to Die from Kidney Disease. Kidney failure may be both prevented and treated with a plant-based diet, and it's no wonder. Kidneys are highly vascular organs packed with blood vessels. Harvard researchers found three significant dietary risk factors for declining kidney function, animal protein, animal fat, and cholesterol. Animal fat can alter the actual structure of our kidneys. In my video, How Not to Die from Kidney Disease, you can see plugs of fat literally clogging up the works in autopsied human kidneys from a study published in the American Journal of Pathology. Animal protein can have a profound effect on normal kidney function, inducing hyperfiltration, increasing the workload of the kidney. Not plant protein, though. After eating a meal of tuna fish, the increased pressure on the kidneys goes up within only a few hours. We aren't talking about adverse effects decades down the road, but literally within hours of it going into our mouths. What happens if, instead of having a tuna salad sandwich, you had a tofu salad sandwich with the exact same amount of protein? No effect on your kidneys. Our kidneys have no problem dealing with plant protein. Why does animal protein cause the overload reaction, but plant protein doesn't? It appears to be due to the inflammation triggered by the consumption of animal products. Indeed, taking a powerful anti-inflammatory drug along with that tuna fish sandwich can abolish the hyperfiltration protein leakage response to meat ingestion. There's also the acid load. Animal foods such as meat, eggs, and dairy induce the formation of acid within the kidneys, which may lead to tubular toxicity, damage to the tiny, delicate urine-making tubes in the kidney. Animal foods tend to be acid-forming, especially fish, which is the worst, followed by pork and poultry, whereas plant foods tend to be relatively neutral or actually alkaline or base-forming to counteract the acid, especially green leafy vegetables. So the key to halting progression of chronic kidney disease might be in the produce market, not in the pharmacy. It's no wonder plant-based diets have been used to treat kidney disease for decades. In my video, you can see a remarkable graph that follows the protein leakage of subjects first on a conventional low-sodium diet, which is what physicians would typically put someone with declining kidney function on, then switched to a supplemental vegan diet, Back to the conventional diet, once more on the plant-based diet, and back and forth again. The chart is filled with zigzags, showing kidney dysfunction was effectively turned on and off like a light switch, based on what was going into their mouths. How Not to Die from Diabetes We've known since the 1930s that type 2 diabetes can be prevented, arrested, and even reversed with a plant-based diet. Within five years of following the diet, about a quarter of the diabetic patients in that early study were able to get off insulin altogether. Plant-based diets are relatively low in calories, though. Is it possible their diabetes just got better because they lost so much weight? To tease that out, we need a study where people are switched to a healthy diet but forced to eat so much food they don't lose any weight. Then we could see if plant-based diets have specific benefits beyond all the easy weight loss. 
We had to wait 44 years for such a study, which I then discuss in my video, How Not to Die from Diabetes. Subjects were weighed every day. If they started losing weight, they were made to eat more food, so much more food, in fact, that some of the participants had problems eating it all. They eventually adapted, though, so there was no significant weight change despite restricting meat, eggs, dairy, and junk. Without any weight loss, did a plant-based diet still help? Overall insulin requirements were cut about 60%, and half the diabetics were able to get off their insulin altogether. How many years did that take? Not years. An average of 16 days. Only 16 days. Let's be clear. We're talking about diabetics who had diabetes as long as 20 years and injected 20 units of insulin a day. Then, as few as 13 days later, they were off their insulin altogether, thanks to less than two weeks on a plant-based diet, even with zero weight loss. It's astonishing. 20 years with diabetes and then off all insulin in less than two weeks. 20 years with diabetes because no one had told them about a plant-based diet. For decades, they were just 13 days away at any time from being free. In my video, I show data from patient number 15, 32 units of insulin while on the control diet, and then 18 days later, after switching to the plant-based diet, on no insulin at all. None. Lower blood sugars on 32 units less insulin. That's the power of plants. And that was without any weight loss. His body just started working that much better once it was provided with the right fuel. As a bonus, their cholesterol dropped like a rock to under 150. Just as moderate changes in diet usually result in only moderate reductions in LDL cholesterol, how moderate do you want your diabetes? Everything in moderation may be a truer statement than some people realize. Moderate changes in diet can leave diabetics with moderate blindness, moderate kidney failure, moderate amputations, maybe just a few toes or something. Moderation in all things is not necessarily a good thing. Remember the study that purported to show that diets high in meat, eggs, and dairy could be as harmful to health as smoking, suggesting that people who eat lots of animal protein are four times as likely to die from cancer or diabetes? If you look at the actual study, you'll see that's simply not true. Those eating a lot of animal protein didn't have just four times the risk of dying from diabetes. They had 73 times the risk of dying from diabetes. A 73-fold increase in risk. And those who chose moderation, only eating a moderate amount of animal protein, had 23 times the risk of death from diabetes. You just listened to How Not to Die from Kidney Disease and How Not to Die from Diabetes by Dr. Michael Greger at NutritionFacts.org. And this is the Plant-Based Briefing Podcast, and I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Thanks for listening.